is my studio. And this is the new keyboard rig. Okay, so today we have the Reface DX from Yamaha. This keyboard is modeled after the DX7, DX100, and other FM synthesis keyboards that were popular back in the 80s. I love how the box folds open like this. It makes it really easy, especially if you want to continue to store the keyboard in the box. We've got the manual here. I want to hold this up for everybody to see. This manual covers all four Reface compact keyboards. Interestingly enough, you can see that the DX is considered to be the brown one. This is a MIDI cable that will let us connect this keyboard to other keyboards for a variety of uses. This is the power supply, which, ironically enough, the PSR keyboard that I reviewed the other day does not come with. Ta-da! Here's the unit itself. I don't know about on camera, but it does look a little bit brown here in person. 37 mini keys and a set of controls for synthesizing your own sounds. So here's a look at the back panel. So the power supply plug-in, power on off, input for a sustain pedal, input for uh, Auxiliary, we'll be using that later on. We also have the left mono output, the right input, and the headphones output. So in addition to being able to synthesize your own sounds, which we'll look at in a couple of moments, this does come with what it considers 32 classic DX sounds from the 80s. I'm going to show you some of them right now through its own speakers and then later on we'll connect both keyboards and take a look at how it sounds through the onboard speakers of the Porta Sound, which are really almost four times the size of these speakers here. This is Digicord. Sound quality is pretty good, but you can see this is not a loud instrument. These speakers would be suitable basically for practice only. They would not be something that you would really be using for any kind of performance. Really, even in a space like my studio here, they could stand to be a little bigger. Wobble bass, you fans of modern electronic music should love something like this. So there seems to be some kind of velocity tie-in here, where if I press the keys with quick velocity, we get individual articulations. But if I play with a smoother, slower style, we get actually the actual wobble, wobbling between pitches. So if I play with an aggressive attack, what if I play in a more legato style? By the way, I don't know if this means anything to you or not, but I don't think the cats like this one. Um, just by judging, I don't know how much of them you can see on camera, but just thought I'd throw that out there. This is motion pad. Um, a lot of people have said that they don't think eight voices was enough for this keyboard. 
in my opinion, for our purposes, eight voices should do fine. Um, but if you're really someone who's going to use a lot, a lot of pads for what your compositions do, you may find eight voices a little bit limiting for one take. This is beep clavy. Feel it. Well, that sounds interesting. This is kind of a sound effect. It's called Buzz Siren. You can see that what makes this really cool is the way the sounds kind of create these weird sort of combinations of waves that do some sometimes unexpected things. Bit tune. Tell you the truth, with sounds like that, I'm hoping that my students can teach me about the new electronic music styles that they're fond of by showing me how an instrument like this might be applied to songs they like. Now some of the voices on here are not polyphonic and you don't get access to all eight voices. This unilead is an example. You only get one note at a time, but what's interesting is it has, to a degree, last note priority. However, if you hold two notes at the same time, you can actually cause the voice to balance between the two. For example, if I hold this note while playing a pattern like this, and then let up, it bounces back to the first note. I bet some of your eyes lit up at that. Attack bass. Well, that sounds exciting. Not bad. I think it's going to sound better through the bigger speakers. Cloud pad. Ooh, nice. Very much like a sci-fi type of sound on that one.
star pad. Classic good old Warren pad. This is going to sound a lot better through bigger speakers, I can guarantee it. There again, you can just hear how that sound shapes over time. Different interferences in the waves. It gets louder, it gets softer. That's what's really cool about the DX. That's why we got this one. I will say in the low octave, you're not getting a lot of response out of instruments like this. I can barely hear this and I have the volume all the way up. That's why we got a bigger set of speakers. Future Bell. Glass Harp. Chopper. Very strange and interesting. wouldn't be a review of this if I didn't go through and mention how you're capable of producing the sound of the old Taco Bell logo. There it is. The tubular bell setting on the DX. Now you know. Just listen to the sounds that you can get from this thing.
Now the cat seemed to really like that. Now just for a reminder, let's look at the sound that we started with. Cheese organ. That's where we started. That's what's cool about the DX and why we got one. Oh yeah, and one more thing that really I suppose should be mentioned is the pitch bend wheel.